Lord will make a way somehow. Hallelujah. If you're a living witness, amen. Hallelujah. The fact that you're still here clothed in your right mind, you know that the Lord did it somehow. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If you need the Lord to make a way, come on, come on, come on. I've learned if you praise him in advance, he will indeed show up. He will indeed show out. He will indeed step in and do what we need him to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beginning. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you feel good today? Thank you, Jesus. God with his good self. Keep right on showing up. Keep right on making a way. Hallelujah. Beginning with that 13th verse. And after you found it, amen. I'll just read one verse from 1 John chapter 2. Look at his neighbor and say, neighbor, I got it. And it reads, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, if the salt has lost its flavor, if the salt has lost its essence, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Verse 20 says, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. 1 John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, or well, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Pray with us today as we deal with the thought, determined to be different. Determined to be different. Wherewith a man, if the soul has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing. And I want to subtitle this and mess with you a little bit and ask you to look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, what are you good for? What are you good for? 
Father, thank you again for this opportunity and privilege to stand behind this, thy sacred desk. We ask, Lord, that you would just have your way in all that we seek to say and do. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. Let every heart say, amen. My grandma had a saying when you got on her nerves. And if you, amen, did not carry out the task that she assigned to your hands, she good for nothing rascal. There is something about this series on the church that has been blessing me. I don't know about you, but I have been blessed. And it is my prayer that you have, amen, began to get a sense of where all of this is leading. Amen. The messages from the past two weeks alone, amen, troublesome times in the temple and when breakup leads to breakthroughs. Um, hopefully you have began to see, amen, that the Lord is using these messages to paint a powerful picture of what the church should be about. Troublesome times in the temple when Jesus went in and cleared it out and drove those individuals out. Amen. It was needful and necessary, amen, for his will to be done. But not only that, and I want to be very explicit here about what I'm about to share with you, amen, after it was done, we noted last week that the individuals that were in need of a healing, those individuals that were in need of deliverance, they came to Jesus and they were healed. More importantly, the children were in the temple and they were crying and saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Understand that when we clear the church of the clutter, when we get those things dealt with, and when we begin to do the things that God has assigned to our hands, I believe the ones that are ones the ones that matter to God, believe it or not, He loves us all, but there's something about children. I believe, amen, that God wants us to have an environment wherein our children will not grow up cynical of the church, cynical of the church, skeptical of the church, but more importantly, having a deeper and an abiding appreciation of just who God can and will be in their lives. Well, Pastor White, where are you going with this today? I believe at the end of the day, it's all about the heart of the church's purpose and mission. The church should be a house of prayer for all people. If you're trying to get close to the Lord, you should be able to come into the household of faith, amen, and be blessed. Amen. You should be able to come and not leave the same way in which you came. Rather, amen, I've seen so many times we have strayed. We have missed the mark. Oftentimes when we talk about missing the mark, amen, it's from the Greek word harmonia which means, amen, in the Greek, sin, amen, to literally miss the mark. When we miss the mark, it does not mean that we can't go back and correct it. Why? Because God has given us an answer. He has given us an advocate. He's given one who has been the propitiation of our sins, that is Jesus the Christ, the one who takes away our sins. But Pastor White, how do we deal with the stuff that we are confronted with every day? I believe the words of that song, amen, by the great Thomas Walker when he says, amen, yesterday is gone and tomorrow may never be mine. But Lord, for thy sake, help me to take one day at a time, one day at a time. One day at a time, working out your own soul salvation, not be worried, becoming so encumbered with what, what happened last week, not worried about what happened last year or things that happened decades ago. Focus on what the Lord is saying to you right here and right now. Forgiveness is available. All you have to do is walk in it. Look at your neighbor and say, walk in it. What are you trying to say, Pastor White? I believe, amen, that there are some things that we experience in this life that can serve to have mental, psychological, and emotional impact upon us. Amen. They will take a toll upon us. I would like to refer to them as three things, and we'll talk about these more on Tuesday night. Amen. The first is episodes. Secondly, amen, there are events, and then there are exchanges. Episodes 
events and exchanges. Note all of these, not all of these are outcome determinative as it relates to your faith, but they can have a profound impact upon your life and your living. First and foremost, what is an episode? An episode is one of those things, amen, which happens, which occurs, that exposes us to things that can prove to be eye-opening. Episodes can be eye-opening. Sometimes in an episode, you'll find out stuff about yourself that you didn't even know. You might, we'll call it a moment. <laughs> In episodes, you can have an epiphany wherein your eyes are open as to why you have been doing and why you have been dealing and why you have been doubting what God has been saying to you all your life. An episode. Then there are events. An event, an event is an encounter or encounters which are unexpected and sometimes traumatic moments in our lives that collectively can take its toll upon you mentally. Hello in here. An event. The loss of a loved one can be an event. The loss of a job. You went in smiling. You left out of there wondering what happened. <laughs> but I've learned, amen, that regardless of what happens, you've got to look, look at things through the lens of faith. If they have you going out of there with a box or didn't even let you clear your desk, shout anyhow. Flip the script on them. You know, folks, in matter why don't see what your reaction is going to be. And before you leave, do a victory lap around the parking lot. I shook the dust off it. I'm going to scratch off it. Ah! Then there are exchanges. Exchanges. All those times which can embitter. And unfortunately, embarrass. Anybody here ever been embarrassed? How in the world? Not me. Yeah, you. Once again, they can all catch you off guard. And it's important to note that while all of these have an educational component to them, and guess what? Will give us, amen, takeaways. I want you to know that they are there. They are allowed. They are permitted to help develop you in your walk with God. A mistake doesn't have to define you. But you must be devoted to God that regardless of what happens in your life, I'm going to stand on the word and it's going to be all right. Look at somebody and say, I know he's talking truth. Because the key here is to, to get what God reveals about knowing that there's a purpose behind it all. One, amen, for our good and ultimately for his glory. For our good and ultimately for his glory. Having said this, amen, I want to move on today because I realize it's going to be 88 degrees and, and I realize that there are some things that are happening and I've seen a few people fanning already. But understand this, there is something that I want you to leave here with today. And that is that you're good for something. God did not make junk. He brought you out of the darkness and into the marvelous light for a reason. But there's something that has come into, has crept into the church that is somehow or another impairing our ability to just fully understand and appreciate just 
who we are and whose we are. You've been called to make a difference in the world in which you live. Sadly, many polls reveal that Christians and non-Christians alike have nearly the same kind of behaviors. Uh oh, got quiet. Saying something is wrong here and that it seems to indicate that faith does not necessarily seem to provide a man or, or, or the impetus for righteous living. Amen. The mere fact that we come to church, amen, some folk, it's just not enough. For some people, amen, I understand that guess what? I would rather, amen, see some things, amen. I, David said it this way, it's good that I might be able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, amen, I want to see it. And guess what? Sometimes many of us can't wait for the Lord to deliver us. And we try to help him out. I've learned this. God don't need your help. He needs you to work out your soul salvation. But God does not need your help. All God needs you to do, amen, is to do what he's assigned to your hands. Move on, Pastor White. What are you trying to say? There are some experiences and encounters, amen, that will expose us to some of the most unsavory aspect that accompanies living in this world. Being in the wrong place, being around the wrong people, hello somebody, not understanding what your purpose is will have you in predicaments from time to time. But at the end of the day, I believe that we are to look unto Jesus the author and finish of our faith and everything will indeed be all right. In today's message, we go back a few chapters from where we were last week and we return to the start of Jesus' ministry. The Sermon on the Mount. It is important to note that Jesus is clearly a man explicit about what is to be expected of those who call themselves followers and adherents to the teachings of God. Jesus wants us to know and he wanted them to know, amen, that we are to be salt and light in this world. And if you are to be salt and light, that there must be something different about us. As such, there must be sources of enhancement and enlightenment, amen. We must be sources of enhancement and enlightenment in the world. People must see that there's something on the inside of you that comes as a result of your relationship with God. Before I go any further, let's take a few moments to delve deeper into our text and make the follow, examine the following by making, amen, the following observations. First and foremost, Jesus talks about, and we see, endearing examples. Endearing examples. What is he talking about here in Matthew 5? He talks about, amen, in verses 13 through 16, that we are to be salt and light. There's something about salt and light. He says, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. Do you notice what is, amen, absence, absent in this command? He said, you are, amen, you are. He didn't say like or as. There is no metaphor or simile here. What he's saying, he's being specific about it. He didn't say you ought to be like salt. Huh? He didn't say you should be like light. He said you are salt and you are light. Hello, somebody. We are commanded to make a difference. The common denominator of salt and light is their uniqueness, amen, and their distinctness. There's nothing quite like salt and there's nothing quite like light. Salt, amen, just can enhance the flavor of things. Amen. You, and when you eat food, you immediately know when there's too much or too little. Can I get a witness in here? We ain't talking about too much, amen. Some folk, before they even taste stuff, they're reaching for the salt shaker. Can I get a witness up in here? Light is very unique as well. Light can make a difference. Light can drive out darkness. 
Oh, hello in here. One candle can light up a room. But understand this, that when you have light, darkness cannot be there. But if you have darkness, guess what? Light can still shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Just as salt is different than pepper, light is distinct from darkness. So a Christian is distinct from the world. Have you ever been in a group of people and someone started to tell an off-color joke? And then stop mid-sentence because they recognize that you were in the room. Well, I can't say that because they're in here. Amen. The devil is alive. That's right. Moving on. That's your distinctness coming through. Have you ever been amongst a group of people and they suggested going somewhere? Amen. And they, they, they wouldn't want their children knowing about it. Hello, somebody. And then they said, no, we can't do that. Because she here. That's the difference. That you make in this world. Jesus, amen, talks about our distinctiveness showing through. He warned his followers, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Perhaps the most important thing that I want to leave with you today is that salt in its purest form will never lose its taste. Can I get a witness up in here? Salt will always be salt. It is an extremely stable compound. It is a powerful preservative. Back when I was a kid, my mom would make the salt herring. Boy, I tell you the truth, it smelled like the Dickens. She would get that bucket and she would put that in the line. It was salt. And guess what? Six, seven, eight months later, she would go reach inside that thing, eight man, and the smell would light up the kitchen. And she would go in there and do what she needed to do to prepare it. And she would sit down and act as if she's at a king's buffet. Salt. That ham. That country ham. That been hung out there, been smoked, smelled like an old foot. <laughs> but if you put that bad boy up and boil that salt out of it, hello, somebody, I'm making somebody hungry up in here. What a time. But salt, if you put it in a dish and walk away and came back 10 years later, it will still be sodium chloride. Salt. The only way that salt can lose its saltiness is to be mixed with something else. You chemistry majors and minors, hello somebody. When you mix it with something else, it will lose its essence. The point Jesus is making here is that it's dangerously easy for Christians to become deluded and to lose their salty, preserving influence in the world. And get this, if you are not infecting, amen, affecting the world, amen, then the world is affecting you. Get this, and I want to say it like this, if you're not affecting the world, chances are the world is infecting you. Uh-oh, leave it alone. If you're not preserving, then guess what? Something is rotting. Salt can be tasted. Light can be seen. And great effort has to be made to cover up either one of them. Salt in a salt shaker and light under a bushel basket will make no impact. We are to make a difference. And in order for to keep the world from affecting us, we must stay in close contact with the ultimate influence. That is Jesus Christ himself. Endearing examples, but not only that, amen, we see expressed expectations. Expressed expectations. Jesus just lays it out there. He says that, guess what? Don't you be like everybody else. 
If you really want to be different, if you really want to be, amen, the child of God, amen, that you I've called and crafted and created you to be, guess what? I want you to know that your righteousness, verse 20, amen, must exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. Your righteousness has got to go beyond, amen, the examples that we see sometimes in this world. Uh-oh. Lord, can I say it again? If the church is truly going to be the church, we got to be about the business of being the church. For I say unto you, amen, that except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. We are more than just a name. We're more than just titles, but we must possess a testimony. At the heart of the matter, amen, Christians were expected, the followers were expected to be exceptional in their living. Scribes here, in the Greek, amen, the word grammatic, grammation is where we get our word grammar or grammatical. Amen, they were simply ones who dealt with the letter of the law, the interpretation of the law, and the recording of the law. They wrote down the law. They studied it in depth. They had a command of what they thought the law should say or mean. They were the authorities. They were scholars. Yet they were those who struggled with the fine points of the law. They expected everybody else to do it. Hello somebody. But they were not willing to do it themselves. Oh, can I get a witness in here? Scribes were both Pharisees and Sadducees. Get this here. Jesus had issues with Pharisees and Sadducees. Sadducees were theological liberals. And the Pharisees were theological conservatives. Their jobs were simply to copy the law, but it came down into their interpretation. What can I say about this? Amen. If you look at what we are, where we're going here, is that everybody in here reads your Bible. At least I hope you do. But it's amazing to me how the same people reading the same Bible can come up, amen, with different understandings of what thus saith the Lord. Some can have a very liberal interpretation. Some, a man can have a very conservative or strict interpretation. Some folk feel, guess what? You can do whatever you want to do. Amen. And get into heaven. Some folk feel, guess what? You've got to be in church seven days a week. You've got to have a big cross around your neck. You've got to have a big Bible in your hand. And everything that you deal with, everything that you say coming out of your mouth, got to be praise the Lord and hallelujah. I believe at the end of the day, God wants us, amen, to have balance. You, amen, can draw people, hello somebody, or you can turn people away. You can be salt, but you can become too salty. Huh? You can become so deep that folks see you and they go the other way. I don't want to be dealing with him today. You can't have a toothache. You can't have a headache. With his stripes, you're healed. Well, I thank you so very much, but get me an Anderson. That's what my mom used to say. Y'all know what an Anderson is. <laughs> we got to be real about the issues that are confronting and the things that the church is facing today. We must realize that when the people come into the household of God, that they've gone through some stuff. They've dealt with some stuff. They've been torn down. They've been broke down. And every now and then, they need somebody to remind them, just hang on in there. Everything is going to be all right. Trouble won't last always. But we also need a church to remind people, amen, that you can't go out and do everything that the world's doing. Hello in here. Can I get a witness in here? You can't be hanging out, amen, doing what you do, amen. And there's a, there's, a, there's a phenomenon going on now with pastors showing up in the strip clubs and giving the dollars, amen, to Diamond and, and to, to Bunny and, and Sapphire. And not our Sapphire, hello somebody, but Ruby and Star. You know, you know what I'm talking about. The crazy. 
craziest mess. How in the world can you be up there and somebody, amen, working the pole and doing all those things and, and you in there talking about, I'm here to represent Jesus. You can't be in there. And it just ain't the pastor. Some of y'all too, can I get a witness? You can't be out there. You can't be doing it. Hello, somebody. You can't be backing it up. You need to know you got to live something. Except your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Understand this. Amen. I believe that God is looking at your heart. I believe every now and then, amen, every now and then I tell you about that left leg, amen, that still needs to be saved. Every now and then you might hear a beat, amen, that takes you way back and you don't even know it, but that leg is... And you got to put your hand on this leg, be still. There are some things that we experience, some things over the course of the week. Somebody gets on your nerves. And you feel like doing some ungodly things. Hello, somebody. Oh, they say one more thing to me. Look at me one more time. I'm going to let them have it. I'm going to let them know something. But understand this. Hold your peace. Let the Lord fight your battle. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. We got to live. We got to be resigned to live holy. But far too many people in the church are like the Pharisees. They're so separate. Amen. They're separatists. Amen. Having a super fundamental understanding of what God required of them. Pharisees kind of lifted themselves up out of Jewish society as a super elite group who always knew what was the Lord was saying. Amen. They convicted themselves that they were the real spiritual hotshots. I believe at the end of the day, when you understand just what God has done in your life, you will know, amen, what it means, amen, to be saved by grace. You'll know what it means that if it had not been for the Lord who was on in your side, oh my God, where would I be? I believe that's what makes church so wonderful in here today. Amen. When people come in, amen, realizing that, amen, in spite of the things that I've gone through, in spite of the things that have been done to me, in spite of the things that have been said, I'm still here. And I don't care what you come to do, but I've come to praise the Lord. Can I get a witness up in here? I've come to lift up my voice. I've come to clap my hands. I've come to do a holy dance. I've come just to say thank you because I realize that you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Can I get a witness up in here? And I'm getting ready to head to my seat. Can I look at one person in here and say something to them? Minister White, I just want to mess with you just for a minute. I realize that sometimes in this thing called life, it gets a little rough and tough. And I realize that there are moments when we're trying to pull things together. And we're trying to get ready for the baptism this morning and amen I had my amen uh, 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 my waders on get ready to go into the water amen and I'm sitting in there and one of the straps amen was broke and I don't know if you even thought anything about it but I, I saw you I saw you looking at Jim Paul's for a minute like now what is he gonna do with that one side was strapped on and I'm just basically walking keep moving and but it was broken and it just wasn't gonna stand there and I recognized that he understood that there was something wrong with the get up. But understand this, that there's something about the God that we serve. That once I put on my robe, and once I began to get my mind right, the strap didn't matter anymore. Because I didn't have to keep on messing with it. Once my mind got on what it was all about, I was here, amen, hallelujah, to take somebody down to the water. Hello, somebody, I can forget about the strap. I can forget about the stuff. And what I came by this way to tell somebody under the sound of my voice is that once you get your mind right, 
stuff could have happened over the course of your week. Something could have been said about you. Something could have been done to you. But you've got to know that you know that you know. That, amen. When your mind is focused on Jesus, how he brought you out without a doubt. That you've got to make up your mind. I'm determined. Amen. To be a bit different. I'm going to make a difference in this service. I don't care if anybody else came to praise him. I'm going to open up my mouth and I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to be an endearing example. I'm going to be an enduring example because I'm going to live up to his express expectation because at the end of the day, I don't want to be messed up with excluding error. I don't want to be so caught up. Amen. In loving the world, the error excludes me that I become like the world. I can't love the world, know the things that are in this world. See, you got to understand, amen, that this world that we're living in is not our home, but we are to live this life so that God might be glorified, that God might be magnified, that he might be exalted in our living. What are you talking about, preacher? You see, in biblical times, when salt lost its savor, it was then taken out and cast into the footpaths. It was used as gravel. Amen. So that folk could just walk on stuff. It would kill out weeds that it might not grow on the road. It was there to give traction. But that was not the purpose of salt. Salt was there to make a difference. Salt was put there to enhance things. And I believe in here today that somebody is here and sees themselves as an enhancer. Somebody to make a difference huh, in the worship of the Lord. Huh? Have you made up your mind huh, that if nobody else will praise him, huh, I'm going to open up my mouth huh, because I'm good for something. Huh? I'm good for something. Huh? Folk may talk about me. Huh? They may hold up my past. Huh? They may hold up my mistakes. Huh? All of my miscues. Huh? They may have misunderstandings. Huh? But at the end of the day, huh, I am an enhancer. Huh? I am somebody. Huh? I've been called to be a light huh, in this world. Huh? I'm here to tell you huh, that there's something about huh, this life we live. Huh? There's something about huh, this phrase that comes out of our mouth huh, that if you open up your mouth huh, you can tell the devil huh, I don't care what you thought. Huh? I don't care what you said. Huh? It's between me and the Lord. Huh? I've come in here today huh, because I've got a balanced theology. I know that God loves me. Huh? I know where he's brought me from. Huh? I know he brought me through huh, all of my trials, huh, all of my tests, huh, all of my storms, huh, and I'm a living witness. Huh, I'm standing here today huh, that God is a keeper. Huh, can I get a witness? Huh, so this little light of mine, huh, I'm going to let it shine. Huh, I'm going to stand up, huh, and I'm going to tell the Lord, huh, thank you huh, for what you've done. Huh, I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you huh, for all you brought me through. Huh, I'm going to tell the Lord, huh, thank you for making a way out of my life because if the truth be told I was hell bound with a first class ticket but God showed up in my life can I get a witness is there anybody in here say I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go I'm going to let it shine all in my home I'm going to let it shine on my job I'm going to let it shine let it shine let let it shine, let it shine, say yeah. Just about done, but I'm reminded of a story about a father, a man who took his daughter out shopping one day. And while they were out, there was a glow in the dark toy that she saw. And she said, Daddy, I want one of them. And daddy said, what are you going to do with it? She said, well, I think it would be nice if I had it. And when you put me to bed at night, after you read me my bedtime story, even after you kiss me on my forehead, you cut out the light in the room. And it's dark in there, daddy. I would like to have my glow-in-the-dark thing. It'll keep me company. And I think everything will be all right. Daddy say, baby, I looked at the price. 
and it costs a little bit much. And she said, Daddy, is there too much for your little bitty girl? And she, amen, wrapped him around her finger. And he went ahead and bought it for her. Ah, oh, they took the toy home. Hello, somebody. She got ready for bed. Daddy came in and told her a good night story. Hello in here. A man kissed her on her forehead and cut out the light. About two minutes later, he heard footsteps running down the hallway. A man, and then there was a knock at the door. She said, Daddy, that toy that you brought me, it ain't working like it should. He said, what's wrong, baby? He, she said, Daddy, it's not working. When you cut off the light, my room was dark. And the daddy walked in the room and said, baby, let me see the box. Did you read the instructions? Amen. And as he read the instructions, he found out that as he read to her, he said, in order for it to shine, it must be put in the presence of a light. And it's got to stay there for a little while. In fact, as long as you need it to shine, it should be exposed to the light. What she discovered is that because it had not been exposed to light, that because it has not been sustained by the light, that when the darkness was there, it was dark in the room. But the moment that she got in the presence of the light, it began to charge up. It began to glow. I stop by this way to tell somebody today that if you want to glow, if you want your light to shine, you better get into the light. You better walk into light. You better talk into light. Who is this light? It is Jesus, the light of the world. If you really want to shine, if you really want to glow, you got to get. in the glow of the Lord. How do you do this, Pastor White? And I'm done. You got to spend time with Jesus. You got to spend time with Jesus. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Spending time with Jesus will revolutionize your life. But if you find yourself disconnected and devoid of any kind of relational connection with him, you're not going to shine. There will be nothing in you that can give you what you need to exude, to project, to portray who you really are. I've learned this. When you're in your word, your word has a way of reminding you of just what God has placed you here to do. Your word will remind you that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them out of them all. Every trial, every test, all the torment and all the tumult of this life and everything that it will bring your way. God has given us an answer. But as a pastor, let me say this, and I'm going to be very definitive here. I find it hard to believe. And I don't preach for response. I don't preach for emotionalism. But I preach because I'm passionate about who God is to me. I'm passionate about what this word means to me. People have asked me, what is your biggest fear in this world? What is your biggest fear? What, what do you think about most? My thing that I think about most is what would people's lives be like without me? You know, you think about what would the church be like? What would my family be? What would life be? And I said, God, the only way I could come to any kind of a harmonization with all of that is knowing that you are in control. I know that you got me. But I've got to come
come to the understanding that you got them. And I want you to know that God told me to tell somebody in today, he's got you. You are good for something. He just didn't save you. He just didn't spare you. He just didn't bring you out. He just didn't wash you of your sins. You are someone. And you are something special. Because of what he's done in your life. Forget it's more important what he's doing in your life. But what the church has got to do. Everyone stand to your feet. I'm done. We got to know. The era is creeping in. When we love the world so much, error can exclude you. He says, love not the world. Not the things that are in this world. Jesus, what John was saying earlier, was what John was saying was Jesus had shared earlier. No man can serve two masters. You'll either love one or hate the other. Literally, you can't serve God in money. I serve a risen Savior. I serve the one who provides, who made a way. Just think back on the times when things were real tough, and you may be going through some tough times now. But know this, the same God that has kept you all these years the same God that made a way the last time when it looked like your back was up against the wall. It's the same God that's going to make a way now. The same God that healed that other person. It's the same God who's going to heal you. He's not a respected person. The same God to turn things around. It's in the business of turning things around. I just need to know there's some people in here today that trust him. That you're determined to be different. Don't you be ashamed of who you are in the Lord. I'm a child of God. I'm saved. Not perfect, but I'm saved. And saved in the New Testament context, context means that he's saving me. You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. He's doing it right now. He's saving you from yourself. He's saving you from your circumstances. He's saving you out of your struggles. But you got to know. That you're good for something. Every head bowed, every eye closed. What are you good for? Don't you be defined by your past? Don't you be brought low? Going to a spirit of depression and despair. I'm so glad. That the blood shall never lose its power. In every instance when Jesus touched someone, when he encountered them, their lives were changed forever. Lord, just speak a word and it shall be done. Lord, my daughter, I can't give you what's fit for the two kings, kids, the dogs. But Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the king's table. Jesus said, great faith have I not seen. God wants you to have the faith to know that in spite of how things may appear in the natural, we serve a God who specializes 
in the supernatural. He ministers through miracles. And if you are in need of a miracle today, and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I want you to come and give me your hand, but more importantly, give God your heart. Trust him today. Trust him. Trust him. I'm good for something. I know I made mistakes, but he's saying that I can be a light. And I've been called to be a soul. I'm good for something. If you're here and you say, Pastor White, pray for me. Pray for me. I've gone through and I felt like my effectiveness has been dimmed. Because I've gone through some stuff. I haven't spent as much time being charged up. And therefore, my glow is almost non-existent. If you're here, I want you just to raise your hands and pray for me, Pastor. I want to pray for you. Every head should be bowed and your eyes closed. So this is between you and your God. I just want to point out to you. I just want to, amen, connect with you in the spirit to let you know it's going to be well. That this word is for you today. You're good for something. And in spite of what folk have said, in spite of what they've done, in spite of what they think about you, you are somebody. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, have your way. I speak life. I speak living. On the increase. I speak living in the overflow. I speak it right now in situations and scenarios that may appear to be broken. That may appear to be burdensome. But God, right now, I know that you can do all things. All things. So God, I speak to that woman. I speak to that man. I speak to that boy and that girl. I speak to them right now in the name of Jesus. God, infuse them with power from on high. Give them the power of the anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside, God. That wherever they go and whatever they do, to your anointing hand. Your favor, your grace, God, will cause doors to open. Your favor, your grace, God, hallelujah, will cause opportunities to abound in their lives. And that the power that's on the inside of them, God, may move, God, anything, God, that's not like him. God, we cancel every demonic assignment, God, in the name of Jesus. We break the power of every curse, every generational curse in the name of Jesus. Thank you right now, God. And God, even in those situations that look like they're too far gone, I'm reminded that there's nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing too hard for you. So God, for every deadline, that is past for every need that looks like God has gone unnoticed father right now I thank you for a turnaround I thank you for a turnaround I thank you right now God for you the lifter of our head and you're the lifter of our head and you're the bearer of every burden and Lord in the name of Jesus we thank you right now that it shall be done. It shall be well. Thank you for being endearing examples. Thank you, O oh God, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen.